What is up, everybody? I am back with another divisional draft class grade. If you have subscribed to the channel, I have taken care of the NFC East, NFC West. In this video, I will be taking care of the NFC North. So without further ado, let's start off with the first team, and that is the Chicago Bears. And boy, did they have themselves a good draft. With five picks in the 2024 NFL Draft, you have to maximize each pick and who can be instant contributors to the team. With the first pick of the 2024 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears selected Caleb Williams, the new franchise quarterback of the Chicago Bears. Such a talented quarterback, won the Heisman a few years ago, easily number one quarterback in the draft. The Bears traded Justin Fields to Pittsburgh Steelers. They needed to find his replacement, and Caleb Williams will try to be the new hero for the Chicago Bears franchise. A-plus grade on that. And with the second first-round pick at pick nine, they selected Roma Dunze out of Washington, the, the third best wide receiver in the draft class. Roma Dunze had such a phenomenal career at Washington, especially with Michael Pettis as his quarterback. Um, Roma Dunze, quality, amazing wide receiver. He's going to be in a room with DJ Moore, Keenan Allen. I'm sure Keenan Allen is probably there for a year, so Roma Dunze will definitely take over that position once he, um, Allen's probably done after this year. But overall, I think the Bears did a great job solidifying the offense as well as giving Caleb Williams playmakers so that he does not flame out in year one. Um, and then in round three, they got themselves an offensive tackle, Karan out of Yale. Um, the Chicago Bears have some quality tackles at at the um at on the team. Um, but with Karan, I think they're gonna probably turn him into a guard. I don't know if they will, but I do believe that the Chicago Bears are set at the tackle position with Darnell White, Braxton Jones. Um, either Karan will probably be their backup. I'm sure he'll play probably play tackle in a pinch. But if I'm the Chicago Bears, I'll probably probably try him out at the guard position and continue to solidify the offensive line. Then in round four, they got Tory Taylor out of Iowa, the punter. And then in round five, they got Austin Booker out of Kansas, the edge. Austin Booker started only one game in college, didn't really test well at the combine, but there are impressive flashes on tape. Um, his length is one of his greatest accent, assets and makes it really tough for offensive linemen to get into his frame. Um, such a quality pass rusher, has explosive knockback power and smooth working inside when offensive linemen get caught on their heels. He doesn't have elite bend or burst, but he's an edge that can win off speed. Off the edge, has active hands, probably won't be a day one edge, but he's probably going to be a great rotational piece. Did a great job post-college football season during, like, really he was part of the East and West Shrine Bowl or maybe the Senior Bowl. But Austin Booker, I'm surprised he fell in the fifth round. I'm sure he's someone that I thought would probably creep up in the top four rounds. But such a great value pick for the Chicago Bears, giving Montez Sweat an additional rotational edge piece on the opposite end. But overall, in my personal opinion, I believe the Chicago Bears knocked this draft out of the park, and I have to give them an A-plus grade based on who they picked, especially with the amount of picks they had in the 2024 draft. Caleb Williams, instant starter. Roma Dunze, instant starter. Karan could potentially be an instant starter at the guard position. Torrey Taylor, definitely need a punter. And then Austin Booker, great rotational edge. A plus grade for the Chicago Bears. Now with the second team, the Detroit Lions, they also had themselves a great draft. In the first round at pick 24, they traded ahead of the Green Bay Packers and selected Terrian Arnold, who was probably 1A, 1B for the top cornerback in the 2024 draft. The Detroit Lions had 
did not have a great pass coverage defense this past season. So definitely the main emphasis coming into the offseason as well as coming into the draft is boosting up the secondary cornerback safeties and making sure they don't have a repeat of last year's pass defense and definitely solidify it in this upcoming NFL season. Terrian Arnold, such a great corner. Um, heading in, I believe he had about six interceptions in the past two seasons, 20 pass deflections. This guy's a ball hawk. Great, great corner. Um, definitely, like I said, 1A to 1B to Kenyon Mitchell. I believe they got themselves such a value pick at pick 24. To me, I thought Terran Arnold was a top 20, top 15 pick. The fact that he fell in the mid-20s in the first round and the Lions got them, got him, that is such, such a great bargain for the Detroit Lions to boost up their secondary. And then in round two, especially late in round two, they got Ennis Rachel Jr. out of Missouri. They double dipped in the cornerback position. And I'm also surprised that Ennis Rachel fell this late in the second round. Such a great man coverage corner. He's someone that will jam you at the line of scrimmage, arm bar you throughout your route. Um, he isn't a ball hawk like Terry and Arnold, but he is a quality cornerback. He's someone coming into um during the beginning of the mock draft season, um, he was like a fringe late first rounder pre combine. Um, but he definitely had some injury concerns, I guess, that he suffered through the senior bowl. But great value for the Detroit Lions, and I believe they did a great job taking care of the cornerback position with their first two picks of the draft. Then in round four, they got Giovanni Manu, British Columbia offensive tackle. This was a bit questionable um um i think they could have gone in a different direction i don't know much about this prospect i believe he's a canadian prospect but um i'm sure the lines had needed um maybe to add some depth to the tackle position especially now that they signed jared golf to a um a new contract um this was a bit questionable to me i think they could have gone in the opposite direction um and then with the second uh pick Within the fourth round, they got Sion Vaki, Utah safety. He was their Utah safety and Utah's running back. So he definitely has some versatility to his game. I'm sure he'll be a great, probably rotational piece in the secondary, working alongside Brian Branch, or could potentially win the safety job and probably be the third running back in the running back room. But Sion Vaki, such a versatile um, safety he um he could play high, he could play in the box, he could play in the slot. He didn't have the best 40-yard dash, but his 10-yard shuttle was really great. So he does have some short area quickness. So we might see him in the slot working within the box in short area situations. So good pick, good pick for the Detroit Lions. Um, round six, um Mikai Wingo, LSU defensive tackle. I am surprised he fell this late in the set in the sixth round. Um, I believe he's probably like a top 15, top 10 defensive tackle in the draft. Um, he had the quickest 10 yard split out of all defensive tackles that ran at the combine this year on tape. Very quick to get into the pads of the offensive lineman. Does a great job stacking blockers, locating the ball, disengages in time to make plays. He had four and a half sacks in eight games in 2023 and has the tools to develop into an effective interior pass rusher in the NFL. He also ran the second fastest 40 out of the defensive tackles that ran at the combine. Definitely has great flashes and ability to overwhelm offensive tackles with power, um, especially when coming off the edge. So he's someone that could be a starter in the NFL. Um, I'm not too sure if he will be a day one starter, but I think Getting Wingo in the sixth round, such such a great quality pick for the Lions, just boosting up the the uh, defensive interior line. Great pick, and then with their second pick in the sixth round, Christian Mahogany, Boston College offensive guard. He is a bully ball playing blocker. What I mean by that is he can either play left guard or right guard right guard but he will maul you he will bully you he will push you around he has such such great grit to his game um so having him and drafting him 
to add some depth into the interior offensive line. Um, he could potentially be a starter as well in the NFL. Um, I'm very surprised that he lasted this late in the NFL draft. So Christian Mahogany, if injuries were to occur in the interior, whether left guard or right guard positions, he could be a plug and play starter and could potentially just take over that spot for the next five to 10 years. So great value pick for the Detroit Lions. But overall, you know, they took care of pressing team needs, which is the secondary. Terrian Arnold, Ennis Rachel Jr., great, great picks. I'm sure, and I know they got Carlton Davis and um, Amik Robinson in free agency, but you can never have enough cornerbacks on the defense. Having locked down corners, great pass coverage. So the, the Lions did a great job taking double dipping at the cornerback position, then getting Vaki, safety, Wingo, defensive tackle and Christian Mahogany, offensive guard. Um, the position that I'm surprised that they didn't draft is the edge. I thought they'll give you know Aiden Hutchinson a running mate on the opposite side, as well as getting a wide receiver in the draft. Um, so I'm a bit surprised they didn't get either or of those um, positions. But overall, great picks by the Detroit Lions, and based off them just getting great value in the late rounds and getting... Um, the double dipping of the cornerbacks in the early rounds, I have to give the Detroit Lions a borderline A. Um, strong B+, plus, but I'm going to just kind of give them, I'm just going to round up. I'm going to give them that borderline A. I think the Detroit Lions did great in terms of taking care of pressing needs and great value in the later rounds. Now, the third team that I want to talk about is the Minnesota Vikings. Great draft by the Vikings, as you see in the first round. Pick 10, they got J.J. McCarthy. Me, personally, I don't think McCarthy is a first-round pick. I think he's more on the fringe first, second-ish. But um, his stock boosted, I guess, whether that's from Jim Harbaugh running his mouth or whatnot. But um, the Vikings really love J.J. McCarthy. And even though I don't agree with him being drafted that high, I think the Vikings did a great job not selling the house to trade up higher in the first round to get him. So by them just staying put, trading up one pick and getting J.J. McCarthy, who is a quarterback that they really loved. Um, great choice by the Vikings, I guess, on their end. And then at pick 17 in the first round, they traded up from 23 to 17 and got Dallas Turner, um, a very, very raw edge um, he's someone that I thought will get drafted in the top 10, especially getting drafted probably towards like the Atlanta Falcons. Um, but um, raw prospect, I'm surprised he kind of fell towards the middle of the first round. So Vikings, J.J. McCarthy got the quarterback they love, traded up for one of the top edge rushers in this class, very raw edge. And then their next pick after the first round wasn't into the fourth round, which is Kyrie Jackson. 6'4", long arm cornerback, um, great man coverage corner. Um, he definitely needs to work on getting his head around to the ball when the ball is up in the air. Um, I watched a few games, and he does tend to grab at the jerseys and likes to kind of hand fight you when the ball's in flight. Um, that will get you penalties in the NFL. He may have, you know... Um, Got away with it at the college level, but he will get flagged a lot if he doesn't work on technique. But Kyrie Jackson, great corner, especially in press, jamming you at the line of scrimmage, arm barring you, very sticky, 6'4", long arms. So he will be a great quality outside corner. Definitely needs to work on some technique and not tugging at the jerseys to pass deflect. Um, and then in round six, they got Walter Ruse. Oklahoma offensive tackle, started 52 games at left tackle in college, very quick to diagnose games and pressures and pass protection, has good size and tends to hold his ground when edge rushers try to go through him. Um, he's someone that I could see being a swing tackle for the um, Minnesota Vikings. Don't think he'll be a day one starter, but definitely swing tackle, depth, backup tackle for the Minnesota Vikings. Then their second pick in the sixth round, they got place kicker out of Alabama, Will Reichard, broke the NCAA career points record in 2023, very accurate and consistent on field goal attempts inside the 40 and has great leg strength to connect from long range. Definitely going to be key 
in close game situations. Then they got Michael J- uh, Jurgens, Wake Forest center. I'm sure he could play the center and probably both guard positions. So he does offer interior line versatility. So starting to add some depth, starting to add some backups towards the late round. And then um, in round seven with their second pick in round seven, Levi Drake Rodriguez out of Texas AMN. Commerce, defensive tackle, relentless pass rusher who had five and a half sacks and a forced fumble in 2023. Very quick enough to develop into a disruptive run defender at the NFL level. Like I said, he's probably going to be a depth rotational edge rushing piece. But overall, I believe the Minnesota Vikings had a good draft. I mean, they got the quarterback that they love, J.J. McCarthy. Then they got one of the top edge rushers, Dallas Turner. Then they got probably a top 10 corner in this draft, Kyrie Jackson out of Oregon. Long, tall, sticky press man coverage. Just needs to work on his technique. And then they start to add some depth into the line with Walter Roos. Then they got Michael Jurgens, And then rotational edge or a defensive tackle. Um, and then uh, place kicker Will Reichert. So overall, really like the Vikings. Um, me personally, I don't think McCarthy is a top 10 pick. And I think the Vikings just traded quite a bit in this draft. Um, they traded a spot to get JJ McCarthy. Then they trade up a few spots to get Dallas Turner. So definitely did a lot of moving pieces in the draft. Um, Compared to the Lions and the Chicago Bears, I don't think the Vikings were are at that level in terms of draft class. So me personally, off my personal opinion and how I view the prospects and their draft class, I give the Minnesota Vikings a strong B+. Plus. What I mean by strong B+, plus is out of 100, I'm probably going to give the Vikings like an 88, 88 and a half. So very, very high B+. Plus. Not not a excellent draft class, but very quality B+. Plus grade. Now, last but not least, the Green Bay Packers. In the first round, pick 25, they selected Jordan Morgan out of Arizona, offensive tackle. This pick surprised me a bit. I mean, Jordan Morgan is was from what I've seen the seventh ranked offensive tackle and second rated um, offensive guard. Typically when someone's rated as a seventh offensive tackle and second rated guard, you could usually get them in the second round. I think this may have been a bit of a reach, um, but the Packers just loved his versatility. He could play left tackle, very athletic. I'm sure they'll be able to try him out inside as a guard um jordan love is the franchise quarterback so the packers definitely want to protect him for the future so going the route of getting the an offensive lineman in the first round was definitely something that the packers probably had in mind i'm surprised they didn't get graham barton who i thought was a packer pick to a t but jordan morgan can play left tackle especially going to come in and compete with Rashid Walker or come in and compete at the right guard position for Sean Ryan. But I give that that pick a B individually to the Packers. Um, and then in the second round, they got Edrin Cooper, Texan a, Texas A&M off-ball linebacker, the number one off-ball linebacker. And I swear this guy just plays as if he just came out of, out of a cannon. Um, with new defensive coordinator Jeff Halfley, I'm sure he's going to be able to move him around in the defense. He's going to be a great duo with Quay Walker. Um, you could probably put him on edge, put him in the box, or probably have him just play some pass coverage. So overall, Edron Cooper, the top-rated off-ball linebacker. Um, Isaiah McDuffie is coming in as the middle linebacker, especially with Devontae Campbell going to the 49ers. They are switching to a 4-3 defense, so they definitely need to invest at the linebacker position. And I think Edron Cooper would be a great fit as well as a great duo with Quay Walker. So that is such a great pick for the Green Bay Packers. And then with the second pick in the second round, they got safety out of Georgia, Javon Bollard. Brian Gunacoust wanted a interchangeable safety, someone that could come down and play man coverage or play close to line scrimmage or come back and play safety alongside Xavier McKinney. 
Um, I know a lot of Packer fans want to group with Dejean, but if you are going into a 4-3 defense, especially playing a lot of press man coverage scheme, Javon Bullard was the better pick. He had such a phenomenal career at Georgia working the slot, and he also had a great career playing as a safety. Me, personally, I think he may see more time in the slot position. He's probably going to compete with Kashawn Nixon for that Nick be a, off the uh, be a slot corner, but we're definitely going to see him playing a lot of safety. But me, personally, um, he has a lot of experience playing safety and the slot. So overall, great, great pick for the Green Bay Packers. Um, and then in the third round, they got top three running back out of USC, Marshawn Lloyd with Aaron Jones going to Minnesota Vikings. The Packers did get Josh Jacobs, but they also have to look long-term at the running back position, especially with A.J. Dillon coming back on a one-year deal. But the getting Marshawn Lloyd top three running back in the draft. Such a great pick for the Green Bay Packers. I mean, Edron Cooper, Javon Bullard, Marshawn Lloyd. I mean, the Packers were on fire with the first three picks in day two. So got to give it up to the Green Bay Packers. Those three picks were a great, a greats for me right there. Then with the second, third round pick, they got Tyron Hopper, linebacker out of Missouri. This was pretty questionable. Um, he, from what I've seen and watched, um, I know that the Packers are going to a four, three defense. So definitely need to get some depth at the linebacker position, but I see Hopper being, um, more of a special teams linebacker. I'm not special teams linebacker. I'm sorry, but I see him starting out his career being an instant contributor on special teams. Um, I think the linebacker position is a bit log jammed i don't think he'll be a starter so the fact that they picked hopper over you know cedric gray who was still there peyton wilson i'm sure i know he has injury history but he was still there and those are two linebackers who i think are better than hopper um or they could have got themselves a cornerback at this spot so this was a very very questionable um pick by the green bay packers so this was like a c minus pick but overall on day two, the Green Bay Packers did a great job getting Hop. Um, did a great job getting Cooper, Javon Bowler, and Marshawn Lewis. So great day two picks for the Green Bay Packers besides the Hopper, besides Hopper. Um, and then round four, they selected Evan Williams, safety out of Oregon. This was a bit questionable to me as well. Um, the Packers traded up 15 spots. Um, and Jaden Hicks was there. Um, so getting, um, Evan Williams, safety, Oregon over Jaden Hicks, who I believe is a better prospect than Evan Williams was a bit questionable, but, um, the Green Bay Packers love senior bowl, um, prospects. He had himself such a great, um, senior bowl. He could play safety position. He could play nickel. He could play in the box. Very versa versatile safety. The Packers wanted versatile safeties to come in, especially them losing three safeties in the offseason. So um, this was crush ball to me. I see a lot of Packers fans saying that he would be like the next Micah Hyde. Um, great run defender. Um, uh, this was a bit questionable to me. So, um, but okay pick for me. I kind of give this pick a C. Um, then round five, they got Jacob Monk, Duke, center. Um, he's someone that I can see coming in competing for the center position. Josh Myers in his final year of his rookie deal. So um, the Packers definitely need to think long term at the center position. I think they could have looked at a center. Um, like I said, maybe replacing Hopper. So instead of maybe getting Hopper, maybe getting a different linebacker, maybe getting a corner, or they could have got themselves a probably top three center. Um, but the fact that they waited um, in round five to get themselves a center, um, interesting, but Jacob Monk offers versatility, was a leader at the Duke football team. So um, versatility is definitely the name of the game for the Green Bay Packers looking for offensive linemen. So solid, solid pick for the Green Bay Packers in round five. 
Then the second pick in the fifth round, they got Katan Aladapo, Oregon State safety. Um, he's someone that I can see being a strong safety for the Green Bay Packers. Great run defender as well. Um, if Javon Bullard wins the slot position, I think it's going to be a battle between Evan Williams or Katan Aladapo for the strong safety position. Um, so the fact that the uh, Green Bay Packers triple dipped at the safety position I believe was pretty smart. You know, Jonathan Owens left in free agency. They have not signed Rudy Ford and then Darnell Savage gone. So by the Packers just triple dipping and just replacing the three veterans um, was a very, very smart decision by the Green Bay Packers, especially since they all provide versatility. Then in round six, Travis Glover, Georgia State offensive tackle. This is more of a depth pick. Um, he didn't have the best relative athletic score that the Green Bay Packers look for. Um, but versatile, sure short could play tackle, short sure could play guard, but this is more of a depth pick. And then in round seven, I think the Green Bay Packers were probably one of the winners in terms of round seven. I mean, they wanted to bring in a quarterback to add in competition to Sean Clifford. They got Michael Pratt, two-lane quarterback, I thought he would have been drafted a lot higher. I thought he could have been drafted maybe in the first four rounds. Um, the fact that he fell in the seventh round was such a steal for the Green Bay Packers. And now that Michael Pratt is a Green Bay Packer, he is someone that I believe will be the start will be um QB two. Um, I think he has the chance to outbeat Sean Clifford for QB2 and probably will be the backup for Jordan Love. Michael Pratt has such a nice touch on his throws. He could drop the ball in the bucket. He's not going to throw a ball 70 miles per hour within 10 yards. He's not going to throw an 80-yard bomb, but smart quarterback. He defeated Caleb Williams this past college football season, so that's a plus, but great touch on the ball. Very smart quarterback, and I'm surprised that the Packers got him this late. Great value to add competition to the quarterback room. And then in the second, with their second pick in the seventh round, they got Kalen King, Penn State cornerback. I believe with him falling into the seventh round was a bit criminal to me. Um, if you look into the earlier mock drafts before the NFL season, you probably saw Kalen King as a first round draft pick. Um, he did not have the best 2023 season. He had a phenomenal, phenomenal 2022 season, um, especially with, you know, I believe Jory Porter Jr. was there. But I believe with him coming into 2023 being CB1, um, he didn't have the best season and Marvin Harrison Jr. torched him quite a few times or a lot, but Marvin Harrison Jr. did that to a lot of corners, which is why he was a top five pick. But Kalen King, he's someone that I believe is going to use this as motivation. He's coming into a great room with Jair Alexander, Eric Stokes, Carrington Valentine. He's going to go into a great room that's going to push him to get back to 2022 Kalen King. Um, Jeff Halfley, the defensive coordinator, is a secondary specialist. He's worked with Darrell Rivas at Pitt. Worked with Rondé Barber at the Buccaneers and worked with Richard Sherman at the 49ers. So he has experience working with top tier cornerbacks. I'm sure he'll help get Kalen King on par and back to that level. Um, but Kalen King is someone who, if Eric Stotes is doesn't return to his normal self and gets injured and the cornerback position starts to get a bit depleted, God forbid that does happen. But if it does happen and they need help at the cornerback position, um, I believe Kalen King will be ready when his name is called, and I believe he will have a great, great season with the Green Bay Packers. He is a name to look out for. Um, such a great steal to be a first-round prospect before the season and then fall to the seventh round. Yes, he didn't have a great combine, didn't have a great senior bowl, but he's going to use his motivation, and I believe he will bounce back. But overall, for the Green Bay Packers, in terms of their overall draft grade, I give the Green Bay Packers a solid B. So let's say... Out of 100, I give them an 85. Um, the positions that I thought they could have taken care of, um, I thought they could have gotten a center a little earlier or maybe a cornerback a little earlier. Um, but overall, a solid B for the Green Bay Packers. But overall, these are my draft grades for the NFC North teams. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do and like this video and subscribe to the channel for more weekly content. I do post every Mondays and Fridays for more football content. But other than that, thank you so much and catch you next week.